And let's take our song books and find page 116 and stand together. He leadeth me. Thank you for an evening service. Thank you for these who have come, these who turn us on and the, over the internet. Pray that you will have your way in our service. We yield them to thee. Pray that familiar truths don't become familiarity. But Lord, we thank thee for thy deep truth. Thank thee for thy word. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to serve. And we thank you that you serve us. We thank you for your grace and your goodness and your tender mercies and your loving kindness and tender mercies. Bless our evening service. Be with those, Lord, who are ailing, <clears throat> those who are waiting on surgery, <clears throat> those, Lord, who live chronically with illnesses. Thank you for the good news of some folks that you have saw fit to raise them up. And Lord, we never pretend to know 
of your will for other people's lives, but Lord, we're thankful, so very thankful that you don't give us more than your grace can deliver us through. Pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Jeremiah chapter nine, Jeremiah chapter nine. <clears throat> Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9, 23. Years ago, I came across these two verses, verse 24 also, and um, how wonderful God's loving kindness, his judgment, his righteousness. <clears throat> this is what he delights in. Verse 23, wisdom, power, riches, they don't affect the Lord, but they affect us. We look sometimes at outward things when we ought to look carefully at inward things. Ready? Jeremiah chapter nine, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Jeremiah chapter nine, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Jeremiah chapter nine, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Jeremiah chapter nine, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. And you may be seated. Number 19. Number 19. Have you been to it? Have you been to it? Oh. 
rinsed and rinked on Lie silent in the grave Lie silent in the grave Lie silent in the grave In this fortless rinsed and rinked on Lie silent in the grave. Good playing and singing. Number 100. 100. Day by day. Moment by moment. Hour by hour. Day by day. Day by day. Passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day with heeding best, lovingly. Fashion, pain and trouble, send and told peace and rest. Every day the Lord Himself is near me with a special mercy and charm. All my cares they fain would bear and cheer me, whose name is Consolor. Thy days, thy feet shall be in measure. This my pledge to thee he makes. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promise, O Lord, that I lose not face with consolation. Offer me within thy holy word. Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, enter taken from a father's hand, one by one the days and moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. Well, thank you so much, Mandy, for that good selection. Take your Bible, please. Open it anywhere, it's all good. <laughs> Take your Bible, please, and find 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians, chapter 12. I've often wondered what his name might be. Have you ever wondered what his name might be. Have you ever thought about the fact that one day we shall see our blessed Lord? And what a wonderful, glorious day that will be. But also there's coming a, di a day, a time, when we will meet our angel, the angel that watches over us. What his name is, I don't know. I do know it's not Michael because I'm not a Jew. And I know it's not Gabriel because he has no message for me. But when we think about the atmosphere, we think about rocket ships, we think about jet planes, we think about supersonic missiles that are flying around the world and how fast they fly and how high they go. And yet, angels move quicker than all of them. They don't need wings, they just move. There are some winged angels, cherubims and seraphims, but uh, basically, angels, they don't have wings. Uh, there are no women angels, sorry about that ladies, but there are no women angels in the Bible. So 
in 2 Corinthians 12, I think is a really good verse here that we'll see in the moment. One of our dear ladies had a baby go to heaven before her. One of our dear ladies had some kind of a virus. Uh, some of you chronically live every day. If you have diabetes, if you have uh, iron issues, blood issues, uh, one of our dear ladies has a vertigo, and that's a difficult thing. Uh, some of you have heart issues, hearing issues, seeing it. We all have issues, and uh, they humble us. But I think it's good to see, and I've never seen this until recent days, where physical attacks come from and how they come. So here, Paul, and if you'd read the 11th chapter, not now, obviously, but if you'd read the 11th chapter of 2 Corinthians, and you wanna talk about some things you'd like to discuss to the Lord about pain and difficulty in your life, and we all have them, compare yourself with the Apostle Paul. Then ultimately, compare yourself with the Lord. and. Uh, we think about the fact that Paul was stoned for the cause of Christ. Uh, think about that. Stone, a stone, and another stone, and another stone until they killed him. When Paul got saved, the Jews hated him with such a hatred they wanted to kill him. And chapter 11 ends with some people holding a basket. How would you like to have been one that held the basket which held the Apostle Paul in it? And so they wanted to kill him, wanted to stomp him out. And Satan hates you when you have a testimony for the Lord. He hates you when you witness for the Lord. He hates you when you live as the salt of the earth. He hates you when your light is shining. He hates you when you attempt to win people to the Lord. He'll do all in his power to attack your weakness. That's why it's very important. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He's not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at one time, hence his little devils. And he's not omniscient and uh, he's not all-knowing so he doesn't know a lot of things about us until you tell him and if God would pull back the curtains and let you see the unseen host and see the devils that are on you and after you and then see that blessed angel that has watched over you since birth you think about that Jesus said that the angels in heaven behold their heavenly Father. <clears throat> now notice verse 32 of chapter 11. In Damascus, Damascus, the oldest city of the world, the governor under Eretus, the king, kept the city of the Demosens. <clears throat> Damascus, Demosens, with a garrison desiring to apprehend me and see it and through a window and a basket I was let down by the wall and escaped his hands who was holding the rope who was holding the rope you could be holding the rope of the next missionary Candidate. It is not expedient, now verse 12, it's not expedient for me to doubtless to glory. <clears throat> this will want to tell you some things. I'd like to brag about it, but I'm not going to brag about it because you couldn't comprehend it. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Now he's talking in the second person. I knew a man. Actually, I know a man, 
in Christ about 14 years ago. Think about that. For 14 years, his lips were sealed. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. Heaven where the birds fly, heavens where the astronauts go, and the heaven where our Father and the Lord Jesus is in glory. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise. According to Luke 16, 23, paradise was down until Jesus led captivity captive. And when he led captivity captive, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 says that the angels knew, the demons knew that the Lord would rise again from the dead. They would have not been rejoicing at his crucifixion. But when he rose again from the dead, the Bible tells us in Matthew that people came up out of the grave, graves and showed themselves and how that he was caught up into paradise. So paradise now is up used to be down that gulf between the lake of fire where the rich man was in torment and where Abraham and Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. How did it was caught up into paradise and heard, see it, <clears throat> unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, in other words, Paul once said, I want to get a big chest or a big head. <clears throat> I should not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Lest I should be exalted above measure, verse seven, now this is important, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, those unspeakable things he saw in verse 4. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. <clears throat> Who? The messenger of Satan. Now, God has messengers. And one of those messengers we'll see is Gabriel. God has a warrior. God has a general of the host of heaven. His name is Michael. Gabriel is God's messenger. So here, one of Satan's devils <clears throat> buffeted me. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. So when illness comes, Sickness come. I mean, why are you sick just for 24 hours? A 24 hour, not say it should be longer, but a 24 hour sickness. And then usually it happens, not always, but it happens uh, Sunday morning, uh, Sunday. Uh, I have a chronic headache. Uh, I have an earache. Uh, I have some kind of an ache. I have some kind of a 24 hour virus. And then Monday, you shovel off to work or to school. You're just fine. Something that Sunday possibly was available for you. God had a message for you. God always has a message for us. If we'll just be submissive and acquiesce to his will and desire that we'll be faithful. Regardless of what happens, we'll be faithful and we will show up to hear his message. Lest I should be exalted above measure, verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Pretty serious. He's praying, Lord. And then the second time, Lord. And then the third time, Lord. I want this to leave. I, I, don't, I don't want this anymore. Lord, take this away. And if you would ever read the 11th chapter and see what this man suffered, we could somewhat understand this thorn in the flesh. And I've heard preachers say, well, the thorn in the flesh was my 
second wife from my first wife, stupidness, stupid stuff. And he said unto me, here it is, and this, this captures it for you. This opens it up for you, if you want. My grace, I should think so. My grace is sufficient for thee. See it? My strength is made perfect in weakness. All right, Paul says. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my weaknesses, my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Father, I pray tonight that you make this simple enough for us to recognize that we have helpers, unseen helpers, that we have so much sufficiency from you by your grace, by your mercies, by your loving kindness, by your tender mercies, by your forgiveness, by your financial stability and physical strength. And Lord, we have so very much. And yet, as we're gonna learn through the book of First Corinthians, they were living below their exalted position. They were living below your perfect purpose for that one church that broke Paul's heart. Help us to see tonight there's an unseen host that watches over us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ephesians, since we're in in the book of Corinthians. We could look at Acts 14. Ephesians 6, 12, we might. 2 Corinthians 12, we looked at. Angels are present. Their activities in heaven and then down here upon earth, planet earth. Ephesians 2. And you hath he quickened, notice the word hath he quickened, the three words are telesized, they're on a slant, that means they're put in by the translators. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, or in times past, you walked according to the course of this world. And sadly, so very sadly, too many of God's children are still walking in the world living in the world, living in the flesh, living for the devil. What? Yeah, living for the devil. According to, see it, the prince, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also, we all had our conversation, that's our conduct, our mannerism. In times past, the lust of the flesh, 
fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Ephesians, we learned this morning, is a doctrinal book. It's about teaching. And we have God's riches, God's riches for us through Christ. God's riches. Oh, my goodness. Not something you can put in the bank, but something you can put in your soul. But God, who is rich in mercy. Oh, my soul. I need his mercy. Mercy is God not giving me what I deserve. Grace is God give me what I don't deserve and I need his grace. And then he has mercy on my soul. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love, for he loved us. Oh, how he loves us. And then I want you to find the book of Daniel. We'll go back there again, but for now, Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. So the first heaven, principalities and powers. Daniel chapter 10. Verse 12. How many of you know you're loved of God? How many know you're loved of God? Look at this. Oh, let's, I don't know where to take it up. There's so much here. Let's take it up in verse 7. Daniel 10, 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the man, see it, the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quakening fell upon them, just like Paul when he was knocked off his donkey or his horse, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness was turned, turned me into corruption, and I retained no strength. You see that? My comeliness was turned in me into corruption, flesh and blood, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of the words. When I heard the voice of his words, then was I in deep sleep on my face, and my face was towards the ground. And behold, notice verse 10, and behold, This is a theophany, an Old Testament appearance of the Lord Jesus. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. So you get that? It's on his face, and now he's sitting up. He said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. Don't miss that. Understand the words that I speak in thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. When he had spoken these words unto me, I stood trembling. Then said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I came for thy words. But see it? Here's the unseen host, beloved. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, one and 20 days. But lo, see him? Here he is. Here's the warrior. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now come. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. See that? In the tribulation time. For yet the vision 
is for many days. When he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground and I became dumb, not stupid, but unable to speak. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned unto me, upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with, talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then came again, notice, then came again and touched me like one of the appearance of a what? Of a what? Man. Verse 18, of a man. And he strengthened me, here it is the second time, and said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. For when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. These <clears throat> unseen devils. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scriptures of truth. And there is none that, with, that holdeth with me and these things, but Michael, your prince. Look at chapter 12. <clears throat> How has Israel won her wars? Very simple. Michael, the archangel. He is the highest rank. He is the commander in chief of the armies of heaven. <clears throat> Daniel 12. Verse 1, and at that time shall Michael, Michael, stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, Jews. See, they're not Gentiles, Jews. And there should be a time of trouble. Hmm, I would think so, the tribulation. And I'm thankful I'm not going through it. If you're saved, you're not going through it. And uh, there are those who think we're mid-tribbers. We're going to go through the first three and a half years and then we go up. There are ah tribbers. That is no, no tribulation. And that is we're already in it. Or that you go through the end and then you go up, which makes no sense. But we're pre-trib. I'm pre-trib. I'm predestinated. And I'm pre-trib. I'm going up before the trib. I'm not a Jew. I am not going through the tribulation. And neither are you if you're saved. The tribulation is for the Jew, not for the Gentile. The church will not go through the tribulation. The church will be gone. Uh, we're living in the church age. But the kingdom is coming. But before the kingdom comes, there will be seven years called the tribulation. And God will get the Jew ready to go into the kingdom. And uh, so that time is Jacob's trouble. Uh, Jacob's trouble is Daniel's 70th week. And we are now in the 69th week. There's still one week that needs to take place. I'm giving you some prophecies, so just bear with me. And that 70th week will be seven years. It's Hebrew for heptap. Not seven weeks, but seven years. That seven years is the seven-year tribulation. When the Antichrist shows up and the Muslims and the Jews and those who are lost will think the Messiah has come and they'll be in for the shock of their lives. Which standeth for the children of thy people and there should be a time of trouble. Jeremiah calls it Jacob's trouble. Jacob is a Jew, not a Gentile. 
such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same day, at that time, thy people should be delivered. Everyone, now watch it, not everybody's going to be saved. It seems like Romans eleven twenty six 26 says all the Jews will be saved. No, they'll be delivered, but not all. Only those who look at what it says here. <clears throat> and all that at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that should be found written in the book. You see that? Written in the book. Now look at chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Sorry, correction, Daniel chapter 9. <laughs> Try Daniel 9. <clears throat> Verse 20. Verse 20. <clears throat> and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins, ah, Daniel was a sinner. Of all the people in the Bible, you'd say Daniel certainly was a sinner. Joseph couldn't have been a sinner, but they were both sinners. Why? We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. While I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mount of my God, yet while I was speaking in prayer, even the, see him? Don't miss him now. The man, who is he? Gabriel. When I, notice, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, chapter 7, being caused to fly swiftly, fast, swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation or the evening devotional. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. See that? Beloved. Therefore, understanding the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks, seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews. Now, God has put a parenthesis, and time has stopped stopped when the Jews rejected their Messiah. And after Acts chapter 7, when they stoned Stephen, he said, you do always resist the Holy Spirit. And they bit him, and they stoned him, and they rejected the kingdom. And God has set the Jew aside and ushered in the Gentiles and the day of grace. Law has turned to grace. Thank God for his grace. But one day, judgment is coming. So right now, we're in the church age. Now watch it now. Seventy weeks, notice again verse 24, are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. You see, no one's going into the kingdom that's lost. No sin will enter the kingdom. But over that thousand-year reign... When Jesus is reigning as King of King and Lord of Lords from Jerusalem, people will be born and they will be born into sin and they will play church. And remember, Satan is loose for a thousand years, Revelation 20. For a thousand years, he's bound in the lake of fire, Tertara, and the side of the pit, I should say. And while he's bound, for 1,000 years, we will be living in a theocracy. Christ Jesus will be reigning. Nobody will have an excuse to say, I wasn't brought up in a good time. They will. And they will rebel against the Lord. And Satan will be loosed out of his prison for a season, and multitudes will follow him. And then comes the final judgment and the final battle. To make reconciliation for inequity. Verse 24, and to bring everlasting righteousness, hallelujah, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to unite the most holy, see that, the Lord. Know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem 
unto Messiah the Prince should be seven weeks, seven weeks or seven years, and threescore and two weeks. The streets should be built again in the walls, even in it, troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, the crucifixion, and not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city. Who's the prince there? Antichrist. Antichrist and the sanctuary and the end thereof should be with a flood and upon the end the war of desolations are determined and he should confirm the covenant watch it now the covenant is a contract with many for one week so the Antichrist comes and makes the contract man this is fitting time for that to happen isn't it all the destruction in the world no peace in the world Europe on fire, the Middle East on fire, governments failing, people falling, God's people sliding and slipping. What a time for someone to show up and he will be the prince. He'll be Satan's man, the Antichrist, but hallelujah, will be gone. And he shall confirm the covenant. He's going to make a covenant with Israel. Let down your, let down your weapons. Israel right now is whipping up on the Middle East. Let down your weapons. Let, there's always been the cry, peace in the Middle East, peace in the Middle East. Since 1948, there's been no peace in the Middle East. He should confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, three and a half years, he should cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate even on the consummation that are determined shall be poured upon the desolation. Now, Gabriel, Gabriel, what else do you have to say? Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. So we see Michael, he is the fighting angel. We don't have time, unless you want me to turn. <laughs> you want me to turn. Revelation 12, war in heaven. War in heaven and we win. War in heaven and Michael will defeat the devil and his angels. Now here comes Gabe. Brother Gabe, the man we saw in Revelation 9 to, or Daniel 9 21, he's a man. He's the messenger. He is the messenger. He brings good tidings. Gabriel is the archangel. He will sound the trump and shout at the rapture. Now, please, Luke chapter number one. Let's take it up in verse five. Here is a godly man, a godly lady, and she has no baby. And Zechariah, has a position and he is a priest. His job is to go in the temple every day and keep the altar of incense burning. The altar of incense is a picture of God's people praying before the Lord. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abba. Aba, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments. Man, not me, but they, pretty good people. Walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. Oh my goodness, what a righteous couple. There's a problem. They had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. To be barren in the Old Testament was a terrible thing because every Jewish mother wanted to be the mom of the babe Christ child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. Anybody else we know well stricken in years, years had a baby? Abraham and Sarah. And it came to pass that while he ex executed the, prince, the priest's office, 
before God in the order of his course. In other words, he's keeping that altar of incense burning. So we should pray constantly all through the day. You can pray. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to see his job, to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of the incense. So they're outside the temple. He's inside burning the incense. And that's a picture of God's people sending their prayers heavenward. So he was keeping the altar of incense on fire. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right hand, right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he fell down dead. Is that what your Bible says? Mine doesn't either. Just seeing if you're awake. He was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers are heard. What do you think he was praying for? Wah! Wah! Praying for a baby boy. Thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth, she had bare thee a son. Notice, she shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name Zechariah. No, John. John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice in his birth. For he should be great. He's a soul winner. He's a soul winner. He should be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he should be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel, see it, he's a soul winner, shall turn to the Lord their God, and he shall be, go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and many and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's what a preacher is supposed to do. That's what a teacher is supposed to do. That is what an evangelist is supposed to do. That is what a missionary is supposed to do. And Zacharias said unto the angel, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Is Elizabeth is shy and Zechariah is full of doubt. Said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. This ain't going to happen. I'm an old man. And my wife, she's even older than me. Well, not so. She is stricken in years. The angel said unto him, I am Goliath of Gad. No, I am Gabriel. That stand, woo, woo, woo. Where does he stand? In the presence of God. And I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, you are a dumbbell. Verse 20, what does it say there? You are going to be dumb. Not stupid, but you're not going to be able to talk. And not able to speak under the day that these things should be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Doubt, doubt. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. When he was come out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he beckoned to them for an iPad. Are you okay tonight? You're not okay. And he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. It came to pass as soon as the days of his ministration was accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and became shy. How shy was she? She hid herself five months saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me and the days when he looked upon me to take away my approach among men. Gabriel meets an old man and an old lady. Now he meets a teenager. He meets a teenager. And the, and the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth unto a virgin whose name, notice, a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Rebel. Rebel. 
Mary means rebellion. She is a rebel. All teenagers are rebels. Huh? You okay? You're not even paying attention. Pay attention, rebel. So, Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. Not above, but among. When she saw him, she fainted. She fainted. No, she was troubled, just like Zechariah. At his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, same thing he said to Zechariah, fear not, fear not. Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, grace. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus means Savior. Jesus is his earthly name. Christ is his heavenly name. And he should be great and should be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there should be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, now she's innocent, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Zacharias doubted, Mary was confused. How is this gonna happen? I've never been intimate with a man. I'm a virgin. Verse 35, what a text. What a text. One of the greatest miracles, my beloved, is the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit was very careful in Matthew and here in Luke to protect the divinity of the Lord Jesus. Very God, very man, divine, God in the flesh. The angel answered and said unto her, she said, how shall this be, saying I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power, now watch this, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore that holy thing which should be born of thee should be called, see him, Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth she also has, what? What? Conceived a son, now notice, in her old age. And this is the sixth month. So John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. And yet John the Baptist said he was before me. Of course, Jesus has always been. This is only his incarnation and his virgin birth. And this is the sixth month with her that is called barren. For with God, now watch this, nothing, nothing should be impossible. Now watch it. Watch the tenderness. Watch the disobedient, obedient. Watch the rebel, submissive. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, Watch this, this is so precious. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went unto the hill country. She's shy also. She's been impregnated by a miracle. In the city of Judah and into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. Now watch this. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake in tongues. No, no, no. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou, see it, among women. How the dear Catholic people are duped and the thinking that Mary was a perpetual virgin when she was not, Luke 6 and Matthew 13 tells us she had at least 
three daughters, four sons by Joseph. <clears throat> blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. From whence is this to me, that the mother, now get this, that the mother, this is old Elizabeth, old Elizabeth, not young Elizabeth, young Mary, old Elizabeth. As soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, for there should be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Now, I'm done with this. And Mary said, now notice, again, that poor duped Catholic people, if they'd get born again, if they'd get saved, if they'd hear the gospel, they could see the truth of God's word and get rid of all these idols of Mary. How very sad. And Mary said, my soul, I want you to see this now. My soul, this magnified the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my what? Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all nations shall call me blessed. For he, 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 not me, he, that is mighty, hath done great things. And holy is his name, not my name, his name. And his mercy is upon them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them a low of low degree. And you'll see that in 1 Corinthians 1. God uses the foolish things of the world, the weak things, to confine the mighty. Filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he had sent away empty. He had hoped or helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her house. Now, one last thing I need to give you. One last thing. Zechariah has been deaf for almost 10 months. Now Elizabeth full time that she should be delivered, she brought forth a son. Her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed her mercy upon her and they rejoiced with her. They came to pass that on the eighth day, every Jewish boy on the eighth day of his birth would be circumcised. They came to circumcise the child and called his name naturally Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but his name should be called John. And they said to her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for an iPad. See it? Right there. How do you know he didn't have iPads? He asked for a writing tablet. And wrote saying his name is John and they marveled all now watch it watch it and his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God and fear come upon all that dwell round about them and all these sayings was noised about throughout all the country of Judea and all they that heard them laid them in their hearts, saying, What manner of child should this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost, just like his wife, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up a horn, notice the horn there. Horns in the Bible speaks of power, of salvation to us, and the house of his servant David. He spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercies promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant, 
the oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us. Remember, God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant, his contract, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, oh, that we would serve the Lord and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, she be called the prophet of the highest. He's talking about John the Baptist. And thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way and to give knowledge of the salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring, the day spring on high, from on high, had visited us, the Lord Jesus and gave light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong and was in the desert, desert on the day of his showing. Shall we stand together? How precious and wonderful. God has angels that watch over us, that look out for us, and they record our daily lives. And they watch over us and they protect us. And we thank the Lord for his tender mercies. We thank the Lord for salvation, free and full, that comes through that divine, precious son, the Lord Jesus, who gave his life a ransom, who went to the grave after he hung on the cross, shed his blood, died, buried, rose again on the third day, now in the presence of God for us. How precious. And tonight, if you don't know him as Savior, be a wonderful, wonderful evening. Wonderful, wonderful evening to be saved. If you know him as Savior, but not as Lord, be a wonderful evening. Wonderful evening to make him Lord of your life. And let him have complete sway and control of our hearts. Father, we thank you for the angels. We thank you, O oh God, for thy divine son. Not born there that day in Bethlehem, that was God becoming man. But from eternity past, the Godhead, you, Heavenly Father, thy divine Son, and the Holy Ghost got together in Acts 3. And the foreknowledge of God, who shall we send and who will go for us? And you sent your divine Son. And he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And Lord, we thank you for that and praise you for free and full salvation that comes through the shed blood of thy divine son. And oh God, help us day by day, moment by moment to know that life is short. Eternity is long. Sin is black and dark and dirty and foreboding. And sin will take us farther than we wanted to go, keep us longer than we wanted to stay, and cost us so much more than we wanted to pay. Oh God, examine our hearts and souls this evening. Spirit of God, turn on your searchlight in our hearts and show us the recesses of our soul. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him and with his stripes we're healed. Thank you for divine salvation, for perfect and free salvation. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Preacher, remember me tonight. Remember me tonight that I'll be thankful, grateful, for my salvation and that I will be grateful and that I'll be so grateful. Now listen to what I'm gonna say, that I'll be an effective witness for the Lord. Pray for me tonight, I want to be an effective witness. I want to tell others what has been told me. Pray for me, amen, God bless you. Someone tonight, you'd say I'm not sure that I'm saved. Someone over the internet, be a tremendous Sunday. The 287th day of 24, 
October the 13th, you can remember this is the day that I got born again. Repent of your sin. Turn to the Lord Jesus alone for salvation. Ask him to forgive you for your sin and be your savior. He promises for whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord should be saved. And you can do that tonight. Preacher, there's some things I'm struggling with in my life. I do too. I haven't arrived. Anybody thinks they have arrived, they're, de they're deceiving themselves. Preacher, pray for me that I have some things I'm dealing with in my life as a Christian. Would you remember me in closing prayer tonight, unspoken request in my life as a Christian? As a Christian, my hand's up with yours. And Father, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. If we could ever comprehend with these finite minds, you have all the bases covered. Angels round about us. The Spirit of God living in us. The Son in heaven for us. You on your throne directing and guiding. Oh, that we would submit. Oh, that we'd be willing to cry out, search me, O oh God, and try me. Know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me to thy way everlasting. Guide us and direct us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three. Number three in your song book. seated. 